In this section, we will talk about data models and supporting protocols. This section provides a high level overview of some of the most common uh, data mod modules and tools and how they are leveraged in a programmatic approach. And they are Yang, NetConf, and the RESTConf. Guys, actually SNMP is widely used for fault handling and monitoring. However, it is not often used for configuration changes. CLI scripting is used more often than other methods. Young data models are an alternative to SNMP MIPS and are becoming the standard for data definition languages. Yang, which is defined in RFC 6020, uses data models. Data models are used to describe whatever can be configured on a device, everything that can be monitored in a device, and all the administrative actions that can be executed on a device such as resetting counters or rebooting the device. This includes all the notifications that the device is capable of generating. All these variables can be represented within a young model. Data models are uh, uh, very powerful in that they create a uniform way to describe data, which can be beneficial across vendors' platforms. Data med models uh, also allow network operators to configure, monitor and interact with uh, network devices holistically across the entire enterprise environment. Young models uh, use a tree structure, guys. Within that structure, the models are similar in format to XML and are constructed in modules. These modules are hierarchical in nature and contain all the different data and types that make up a young device model. Young modules make a clear distinction between configuration data and state information. The tree structure represents how to reach a specific element of the module and the elements can be either configurable or not configurable. Every element has a defined type, for example, an interface can be configured to be on or off. However, the operational interface state cannot be changed. For example, uh, if the options are only up or down, it is either up or down and nothing else is possible. The young model uh, you can see on the screen can be read as follows. There is a list of interfaces as you can see in here. And of the available interfaces, there is a specific interface that has three configurable speeds and they are 10, 100M and the auto. When you check the leaf observed speed in here, this can't be configured guys because of the config false command. This is because as the leaf is named, the speeds in this leaf are what was auto detected, I mean observed. Hence, it is not a configurable leaf. This is because it represents the auto-detected value on the interface, not a configurable value. Let's go ahead with the NetConf. NetConf uh, is an IETF standard protocol that uses the Yank data modules to communicate with the various devices on the network. NetConf runs over SSH, TLS, and Simple Object Access Protocol. If we were to check the key differences between SNMP and NetConf, uh, one of the most important differences is that SNMP can't distinguish between configuration and data and operational data, but NetConf can do it. Another key differentiator is that NetConf uses paths to describe resources, whereas SNMP uses 
object identifiers. A netconf path can be similar to interfaces slash interface slash Ethernet zero, which is more descriptive than what you would expect from SNMP. So you can see a figure on the screen and this figure is illustrating how netconf uses Yang data models to interact with the network devices and talk back to management applications. And the dotted lines in here you can see show the devices talking back directly to the management applications. And the solid lines you can see them here, here and here illustrate the netconf protocol talking between the management applications and the devices. Netconf exchanges information called capabilities when the TCP connection has been made and capabilities tell the client what the device it is connected to can do. On the screen you can see an OSPF router configuration that would be seen in the command line interface of a Cisco router can be using Netconf. The data is just structured in XML format rather than what users are accustomed to seeing in the CLI. It is easy to read the output in these examples because of how legible XML is. Here you can see an OSPF is being defined with a rather OSPF 100 and here is the networks that are being advertised with the OSPF and uh, networks and the subnet masks and the areas are being advertised as you can see in here and you can also set the redistribution options as you can see in here and here also you can see a saved configuration of a Cisco device by uh, leveraging netconf RESTCONF, uh, which is defined in RFC 8040, is used to programmatically interface with data defined in Young modules while also using the data store concepts defined in NETCONF. There is a common misconception that RESTCONF is meant to replace NETCONF, but this is not the case actually. Both are very common met methods used for programmability and data manipulation. In fact, RESTCONF uses the same YANK models and NETCONF and Cisco IOS XE. The goal of RESTCONF is to provide a RESTful API experience while still leveraging the device as abst abstraction capabilities provided by NETCONF. RESTCONF supports the following HTTP methods and CRUD options and they are GET, POST, PUT, DELATE and the options. The RESTCONF requests and responses can use either JSON or XML structured data formats. On the screen you can see a very brief example of RESTCONF GET request on a Cisco router to retrieve the logging severity level that is configured. This example uses JSON instead of XML and notice that in here we can see the request for this URL and here is the response from the RESTCONF and that is 200. That means this uh, request was the successful one. 